Hello everyone, my name is Rain, and today I'm going to be talking about uh, critiquing video games and complaints from people. And this is essentially something that it's good to see that people are actually starting to question and ask more from the game industry, from both the publishers and developers. But at the same time, I do feel that a lot of the complaints that we're having is a bit misguided and also not exactly true or not exactly accurate as to uh, what the complaint is about or who it's against. So for example, if you have a game like Modern Warfare where it's developed by Infinity Ward and it's published by Activision, you have things that are controlled by the publisher Activision and things that are controlled by the developer Infinity Ward. And so for example, server tick rates and server stability and the servers themselves in general typically leans more on the publisher than it does on the developers. And the developer side, they have to work on the netcode to make it work online. And so we have to figure out if our online experience is having a lot of issues, whether it's the servers or if it's the netcode. If it's the servers and the tick rate and the stability of the servers, then chances are it's going to be the publisher that's at fault, not to the developer. And if it's the netcode where you're getting a lot of where you're getting a lot of hidden markers, you're getting desyncs, and a lot of the side effects are very similar. But if you're able to tell that's actually the netcode that's at fault and not the servers, then the blame does go on the developers. So it's just things like that where I want to make sure when we complain or when we talk and critique about a game that we're putting blame where it belongs. And if we can't figure out where that blame belongs, then we just have to put the blame on the publisher. I'd rather put the blame on the publisher over the developer, unless there's some weird scenario or circumstance where we know for sure who was at fault. But a while ago, or a long while ago from now, uh, we, had, we had a lot of people that would be defending games almost blindly. And they didn't care about any of the side effects or any issues or any balancing issues. So long as the game ran, it was optimized to some extent, it had a good storyline, and it was entertaining. That was good enough. Now it's not quite good enough anymore. Now we actually have to worry about game balance, we actually have to worry about server stability, and things of that nature. And I'm glad that the game industry is finally turning to that point where we're starting to balance more games than ever before. Uh, for example, I was complaining a lot during the times of Battlefield 4 because the game just felt unbalanced. And it felt unbalanced because the infantry needed a lot of explosives in order to deal with tanks and anti-infantry vehicles. However, a lot of those players would end up using those explosives to fight infantry. So it didn't quite work the way that it's designed or was expected. And with that, it just came with a ton of frustration of constantly getting blown up instead of getting shot at. So, anyways, I just wanted to show that when we complain about a game and when we talk about them and critique them, that we're getting down to the right issues and we're putting the blame in the right place. And on top of that, that we have actual substance behind our critiques. Uh, we should never really be complaining in a sense. It should never come off as whining or as mean-spirited or just a blind rage of frustration or confusion. That kind of stuff doesn't really help with the developers. It doesn't give proper feedback. And it's fine to be angry, it's fine to rage, and it's fine to make a funny video out of it. But don't let that be your only voice. Actually sit there and talk in specifics what is it that made you angry? What is it, what is it that made you rage? What would you want to have changed? That kind of thing, that kind of talk is what's going to help developers, publishers, and future developers figure out what works, what doesn't, and what they can do to fix it, whatever they can do to change it. So that's what I want to talk about. That's what I wanted to talk about. That If you want to complain about a game, be smart about it and provide as much feedback as you can and try to pinpoint what it is that you feel is at fault. What do you think is the problem? And I had this issue before recently with Insurgency Sandstorm. When I first had the game about a year ago. 
surprisingly. Uh, I was having a lot of issues with the movement system because it didn't feel quite right with me. And there was something with the movement or the aim or something that was really throwing me off. And there was something with the recoil that was throwing me off. And it wasn't until weeks later that I finally got some concrete answers that, oh, hey, it's the suppression system that gives you added recoil. So your weapon's not going to handle the same way when you're under the gun. And at the same time, the movement system was overhauled. So your weight is a lot more effective. And it does change a lot of, of how your character moves and how you aim your weapon and your reaction times and so on and so forth. And since then, the developers had identified these issues, not quite issues, they were actually gameplay mechanics that they put into the game. They either sweep them or out or remove them. With, it, with regards to the suppression system affecting recoil, that system got removed entirely, so all you get is visual uh, suppression, which is how it should always be in my opinion. And I think they did do some tweaks to the movement system so it's not as clunky as it was when I had first played it. Now. I'm not saying that I hated the game during the time, I still loved it, I still enjoy it, but it was those little nuances that made me feel like I wasn't getting the experience that I was promised, I wasn't getting the product that I was promised. And fortunately enough, these developers were able to make changes that pretty much ended up being the same things that, were, that I was complaining about, that I was talking about. Were those changes because of me? More likely than not, no, they were not because of me, I don't take any credit for that. I do feel that me, alongside many other people who have complained about these mechanics, had their voice heard in one way, shape, or form, and the developers listened, and they reacted accordingly. I think that's what it is. Our, my own feedback, it doesn't matter how small I am, it doesn't matter how big my voice is at any given point in time. The only time that things are going to change is if it needs to be changed for the better, one. And secondly, if there's enough people behind that change, if there's enough voices behind wanting that change, is when that change will actually occur. I just wanted to show, but the thing is, I just want to make sure that when it comes time to make those changes, when it comes time to talk to the developers and to send in our feedback, that we're doing so in a constructive way and not in a way that looks like an angry mob or a way that makes us look like we are only complaining for the sake of complaining. That we have proper reason to complain, we have a proper reason to critique. And it's only to make the game better. It's not to make it worse. It's not to yell at someone. It's not to put down any developer or publisher out there. It's to give them the tools they need to figure out what the problem is and how to fix it. And not do their job, but to do everything short of doing their job. And hopefully with enough voices behind that issue, it will be resolved. So that will be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mr. Rain. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And please let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm always looking forward to these type of conversations and just discussing things like this. And, you know, just stuff. So, yeah, hope you guys are staying safe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.